So this week is pretty much a continuation of last week's video. We're moving forward, putting up the ceiling in the shop, trying to get a few things organized around here. We're using the 4x8 sheets of 2 inch thick polystyrene foam for our ceiling held up with wood strips, but there's a lot of work other than just installing this ceiling that has to happen before it goes up. So this week, quick one, onward with the ceiling installation. So here's a product that I really have mixed feelings about, and one that can take a what was professional looking job and turn it into a complete amateur looking job in just a few seconds, and that is spray foam. Now, I really like this stuff, although it tends to get everywhere, all over my hands. The only thing that'll take it off is acetone in my beard, on my clothes, everywhere. But it fills gaps extremely well, and if you trim it at the right time, trim out the excess, um, you know, it cuts and looks decent. So I'm guessing it was about eight years ago when I put up this ceiling in the back corner of the shop and to hold it up to the trusses I used the little plastic cap headed nails. Now I chose not to use those on the, the new ceiling install simply because they don't look very good. I wanted a clean looking install. Although I am trying to get this stuff down and save it, I want to repurpose it and use it to insulate the two large doors on the front of the shop. So I'm trying my best not to destroy it while I'm getting it down. Heavy. So on a building like this, in between each truss where it's sitting on top of the wall, that gap is filled with two befores. Two befores that are set in place, they're not tight, tightly fitted, they're nailed, and that's it. It's a huge area where air can get into the building. And all I'm doing, repairing some of the ones that I had to remove when I extended the overhangs on this roof, tightening them up a bit and spray foaming around every one in order to make this place not so so drafty. I don't know what you would really do otherwise, maybe stuff some insulation in there, but spray foam in this situation is your friend. So let's take just a second and talk about insulation. Let's do a quick comparison, to the best of my ability anyway, between rock wool and fiberglass insulation, some of the, probably the most commonly used materials uh, here in the U.S. anyway. And chances are your house is insulated with fiberglass insulation, just like mine is, both in the attic, in the floor, and in the walls. Now when we bought this place, I went up in the attic and down in the crawl space, and I fluffed up all the insulation because 
my house is relatively old and all that fiberglass insulation in the attic had crept and got thinner and thinner. It probably was four inches thick or less in the attic, which it should have been six or, or eight. And it had lost a lot of its insulating capabilities, not to mention you know, rodents and mice had built in it. And you know, it's just a perfect environment for those guys. And if you live anywhere near a rural area, you've got mice. You may not have them in your house, in your living space, but they're probably very well established in your walls and, and in, your, in your attic. At least that's my experience anyway. And now rock wool, it's much denser than fiberglass insulation and does not seem to suffer near as bad from compression over time, nor does it seem to fall down in the walls as bad as fiberglass insulation does. It is much more expensive, not quite twice the price, at least to the best of my memory, but it is quite a bit more expensive. And rodents don't seem to like it near as well, at least as far as I can tell. They just don't burrow into that stuff like they would uh, fiberglass insulation and insects as well. So that's another reason why I chose this stuff is because I get a solid 10 R value out of this and it's not going to change over the years, right? It is what it is. And it's foam. You could throw this outside and in 20 years it'll still be the same foam that it was when you threw it out. So the longevity of this stuff and its insulating value over that time is going to be going to be stable. Now in the future I do plan to put rock wool up here, but you know who's who says when that'll be. Um, whenever we have money that you know, we that we can put on something like that and we feel like it's necessary, you know, then we'll do it. But for now, this was a good compromise that uh, you know rodents aren't going to build a nest in it. Right? They're not going to pee all over it, and it's not going to be nasty. You know, Ten years from now, it'll be just like it is. So if you watched last week's video, you'll remember me talking about tearing out this wall here. And originally I was going to rebuild these walls and make it a grinding area. This back 25% of the shop where most of my work was done. I was going to rebuild that back and then you know, use it as a grinding room. But I've since decided against that. I kind of like the idea of the open shop, being able to move my equipment around at any time I choose without having to move them through doorways or arrange my shop based on internal walls. So, tearing this out, I'm gonna keep it all open. So here's the old door molding that came off the office space. We did my daughter's height in 2012, 2013, 2014, and then we did it in 2017. So, pretty neat. right 
So while tearing this wall down, I couldn't help but notice that the lumber that it was built with, I'm assuming this wall is probably 20 years old, 15, 20 years old, is just much better than the lumber that you know, I can go to the store and buy right now. Just tighter grained, heavier, just dense, nice lumber. And it'd be nice to be able to go to the store and buy this stuff today, but you just can't. Not that the lumber that we get today is not good, but the older stuff, just definitely better, better wood in my opinion. See that five gallon bucket sitting on top of that board there? The reason that's up there is because before this roof was replaced, it leaked so bad that in order to keep my big milling machine here, I had to have that bucket there to catch all the rainwater that poured through at that spot. Luckily, I don't need it anymore, and it can come down. So check out the corner desk. I scored this out of a dumpster, which is awesome. It's not in great shape. It's all scuffed and beat all up, but that doesn't make any difference when, you know, it's a shop desk, right? But it is a corner desk, which means you have far more working time with it before it eventually fills up completely and you have no space at all to work, to work on. This has been here for three days, and you can see it's filled up pretty quick. But, you know, it's just in the meantime, well... I'm moving stuff around, I have to have a place to set things. So I'm excited to have this desk, really excited. I think that uh, it'll be great. I brought my backup editing PC out here. Uh, my buddy Al, everybody knows who Al is, uh, was super nice over the holidays. He came down and visited us and he built me a really nice editing PC. So this is my backup, my primary thanks to Al, is in the house, and it's much faster than this one. Although, this one's not slow, not even a little slow. So I'll be using it for CAD work out here, or just moving media, right, back and forth, saving me time, potentially running an Ethernet cable out here, a Wi-Fi booster, on and on and on, and having internet access out here, because I currently do not, and I barely have internet access in my house. So, we'll see. That's the plan, hopefully. You know, we'll get this stuff organized and have a really nice place to work up here in the front corner of the shop. It's exciting to see it all come together. So here's a quick example of one of those things saved that I just found. It is a father-son project that me and my boy did probably three years, four years ago, maybe even more than that. And it is an air-powered rocket launcher. And it ro launches these paper rockets. The vanes are made of electrical tape, or that's duct tape, camouflage duct tape. And the rocket body is made out of paper rolled up in a spool and clear tape. It has a 120 volt solenoid and a charge chamber made of stainless, right? It's just what I had. So let's uh, charge this thing up. I'll show you how it works. It's too dark outside. We'll shoot it in here. I gotta fix that hole in this rocket real quick. Then we'll Try not to break a window.
this thing will shoot this rocket so far that uh, you will lose sight of it. Definitely a fun little project. So this is really simple. It's just an air cylinder. We've got a needle valve back here, which you could simply do this with a check valve. And we're, this is 70 PSI. And you open up the needle valve, fill the body, and close it. Then it's charged, and you plug it in, and push the button. Let's, uh, let's try that. Relatively safe direction. Just shoot it towards the back of the shop. Hopefully, it doesn't. We'll shoot the shaper with it. And we shut the door. You get the idea. It's pretty neat. So, these rockets are reusable, although they do die over time. You want to make sure to put some spin on it, on the vanes. That way, once it's traveling, it stabilizes in flight. This thing at 150 PSI, that was, what, 70? So more than twice that really means business. Neat.
Okay, the ceiling is installed. Not finished, but installed and functioning. All I need to do cosmetically, trim around the inside walls, because it needs that to, to where it looks finished. Install the rest of my lights, which is not a small job, and then trim around the attic stairs, and I'll consider stage one of my ceiling complete. Now, what I plan to do in the future and what I want to do, what I talked about, my ideal ceiling would have been plywood and rock wool, is in the future when time and finances allow, take down these wooden strips and the lights, plywood over top of this polystyrene, and then a layer of rock wool on top of that. Then we would have nice plywood ceiling, we would have a polystyrene barrier, and then we would have a nice rock wool on top of that, which would be probably a better ceiling than what this shop really needs, to be honest, because the rest of it's not all that insulated. But that would be what I want to end up with, is something like that. But for now, this is going to be just fine, and it made a huge difference in here, uh, holding in the heat. You don't actually have to stand directly in front of the heater now uh, to stay warm. If you run it for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, the whole shop is pretty comfortable. And, um, you know, you can easily work out here now if you have a small heat source. Otherwise, you know, you were just hovering around the heater, which you don't have to do now, which is nice. Still need to insulate one of the big doors and rubber lip seal around, around them because they're open on the sides. But, you know, we don't want to seal this place up too well. It is a workshop, but looks good. Let me stop talking and show you the ceiling because I'm happy with it. it. Turned out really nice. So I've got this door done and a third of the other door done. I'm just using the foil-backed foam insulation that came off the back quarter of the shop's ceiling. And this is, it's definitely made a difference, if nothing else, just to keep the draft down. Originally, the owners of this place, they put up whatever they had, I'm sure, cardboard, drywall in some places, some insulating foam, probably just to keep people from being able to look through the cracks in the boards directly into the shop. But over the years, you can see that it's starting to degrade. So this will help a lot, just kind of keep an air from blowing in. Now I'm gonna work these edges with a piece of, uh, of trim to keep air from blowing in and around the doors, which will help as well until I can invest in a really nice door that will actually seal this place up. But that'll be down the road and this will work fine for now. It looks good, I think. It looks a lot better than it did anyway. So I think that looks as good as any shop ceiling needs to look, in my opinion. Get my lights up, that'll help a lot. Trim around those attic stairs, and then, you know, the trim around all the rest of the stuff, which is just cosmetic, really, and won't help the ceiling work any better than what it does, but it will make it look nicer. We'll, we'll do that as we have time. My main concern is getting the lights up, because it's pretty dark in here, and then sealing up that one door, well, sealing up them both, to be honest, because as of now, it's like trying to heat your house with the screen door open, which is not very effective. So we need to take care of that. So I think that's it. Man, I felt horrible all week. I haven't mentioned it, but man, I've been under the weather uh, really bad. I got a sinus issue from, I think, dealing with all the dust that I've been dealing with, with the ceiling. So I'm amazed I got as much done as I did. So, looks good. I'm happy. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's supported me on this project. Much appreciated. And that's it. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you wanna scream.